Hey there, I'm Emily, also known as the Drone Angel. And in this video, I'm gonna go over the hyperlapse mode on the Mavic 3 that was added in the January update. I'm also gonna help you all out by giving you some extra tips for shooting and post-processing because unlike other intelligent flight modes that were included in the update, hyperlapses aren't a shortcut. They rely heavily on good technique. Hyperlapses also take a lot more creativity and what you do with them is very much up to you as a pilot. Whenever I'm about to do something, I think, would an idiot do that? And if they would, I do not do that thing. Before we dive into the tutorial, let's take a look at some of the upfront differences between the Mavic 3's hyperlapse and the hyperlapse that we've seen on previous DJI models. For one thing, the Mavic 3 has an edge in the game because of its longer battery life and manual aperture, both of which are pretty important when you're filming hyperlapses. There are a couple limitations, like no longer being able to use the controller in circle mode to adjust your height or distance from the target. You can also only select 4K footage without the option for 1080p. Neither of these things are really a big deal, and the Mavic 3 brings enough to the table that I generally prefer to use the M3 for hyperlapses over other DJI drones. Before we get started, please take a moment and smash that subscribe button to stay up to date on drone news and tips. The Mavic 3 offers the same four modes that we've seen before. Free, circle, course lock, and waypoints. Hyperlapse mode can be found by tapping on video and scrolling until you see the little timer icon saying hyperlapse underneath it. Click on that. Before you start, make sure you have fully charged your drone so that it doesn't run out of battery partway through. Even for short videos, hyperlapses take up a lot of time and battery life. You will also want to be certain that the wind conditions are in your favor before you try to shoot a hyperlapse. Although it's especially true if you're letting your drone hover, wind conditions are always going to be relevant. Sure, you can stabilize the video in post-processing, but it's always better to be prepared. The best way to ensure your post-processing goes well is to minimize the amount of work you'll need to do. In other words, capture good footage from the get-go and you won't have to try to cover up your mistakes afterward. You can pick between RAW and JPEG for file formats, but I don't think you should ever be shooting JPEG hyperlapses unless you can see the future and you're totally certain that you don't want RAW for anything. Seriously, the post-processing is very important. The last thing you might want to think about bringing is some ND filters for filming during bright daylight. These ND filters will also help you achieve some nice motion blur effects without overexposure. And they did come along with the Mavic 3's Fly More combo if you purchase that. Lucky. Free is the vanilla option of the hyperlapse modes, but it's also the most complicated to shoot since you're literally doing the movement yourself while the drone takes pictures and compiles it into the video. I wouldn't suggest going into free mode unless you already feel comfortable shooting hyperlapses or you're a fan of trial by fire. I'm not judging. Since you have complete control over the drone in free mode, there are a lot of variables that you have to keep in mind. The main two are flight speed and flight stability, which you'll have to manage on your own to get the shot that you want. It's a good idea to use cruise control for the sake of consistency. To begin the flight, select your point of interest on the screen and set the interval time, video duration, and max speed. You'll see a display showing you how long it will take to get the shot and how many photos will be taken. From there, just press record once you're ready to fly. Another thing that I want to mention is that the video feed might look like it's lagging while it takes photos because the screen freezes for one second after each capture. This is just how it functions and it doesn't have an impact on connectivity or anything like that. It isn't a sign of anything going wrong, so don't write any more angry reviews about the Mavic 3 just yet. I'm watching you. In contrast to free mode, circle mode is probably the most rigid option. You'll start the same way by selecting a target and deciding on intervals, duration, and speed. But the Mavic 3 will fly on its own once you press record. One thing to keep in mind is that circle mode will only get you part of the way through its motion if you set the hyperlapse length to something too short. You'll get a half circle motion rather than a full one if this is the case. Things get more interesting in course lock mode. 
This is going to be a much simpler option for creating unique shots than trying to get quality footage from free mode, but it still doesn't have quite as much freedom as waypoints mode. We'll cover that next. After you set details for the flight, you'll want to figure out how you want the drone to be oriented and what direction you want it to go in. Something that's interesting about course lock mode is that you don't have to set a subject, only a flight course. It's up to you whether or not you want to add one. I find it useful to add one when I want to highlight something specific in a setting, such as a house or a moving object like a car. Last but not least is waypoints mode. Unfortunately, this mode isn't available outside of hyperlapses on the Mavic 3. This wasn't the case on some of other DJI models, and it's a shame that you're limited to using it with hyperlapses here because it's a really useful feature. We'll just have to cope by making a lot of hyperlapses. Yay! You will need between two to five waypoints before your drone can start filming. You can set them by flying from the starting waypoint to the later ones, but I wouldn't recommend doing this because the drone will have to fly all the way back to the start to capture the hyperlapse. It's better to do it in reverse and start at the end when you're setting your waypoints for the sake of battery life. Along with setting your waypoints, you'll want to decide on a lens direction and the usual video details. Once you've selected everything and set the waypoints, you can begin filming. Like with other hyperlapses, make sure that you've set aside enough time to film so that your hyperlapse shots will be long enough. The Mavic 3 will pre-compile your hyperlapses in a preview video. This is all fine and dandy if all you want to do is share it with family and friends on social media, but most of the time, hyperlapses will need some extra editing magic. That's where programs like Lightroom come in. You'll start by importing your photos to the program and then altering the settings for just one photo. There are so many different directions you can go in, but just make sure that it will blend in with any other videos you're planning on combining it with. Hyperlapses can look awesome with a more surreal look using bright colors. They look just as good with a realistic edit. For the most part, you don't need a ton of image editing to make a good hyperlapse. You'll just want to tweak a few settings like exposure, sharpening, highlights, colors, and shadows. Once you're happy with the look you've achieved on one image, you can apply it to the rest of the images by heading into the image library. Make sure you have the image that you edited selected, then go into the photo menu to develop settings. Press copy settings to save all of your edits to the Lightroom clipboard. Next, you'll select all of the photos you captured and go back into Develop Settings. This time, press Paste Settings. Once I've edited my images, I usually take the photos into Final Cut Pro to create one seamless video. Export the photos from Lightroom, making sure that the settings are for JPEGs at a full 100 quality. It doesn't hurt to also check that image sharpening is also set to high. Since you're gonna be taking these photos and making them into a video, make sure that they're exporting into their own folder and you know where they are. Import your edited photos into Final Cut Pro where you can compile it into a video by selecting all the photos and setting the appropriate length. You will also want to stabilize your video, which can be done either in Final Cut Pro or later in Adobe After Effects. Of course, you can use the programs and techniques of your choice. This is just my method. Post-processing is where so much of your own individual creativity shines through. So don't be scared to play around with things to make your shot come alive. So now that you know how to create a hyperlapse with the Mavic 3 from start to finish, all that's left is getting out there and doing it. Don't be intimidated by all the things that can go wrong or make your shot look bad. Practice makes perfect. If you want any more tips for hyperlapse or other features of the Mavic 3, go ahead and leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed today's video, the biggest compliment to me is if you could share it with someone else that would also enjoy it. Of course, hit subscribe to stay up to date on drone news and tips. If you're interested, I also do online educational consulting and hands-on workshops where I teach you how to fly over whales and dolphins. More information is on my website and in the links below. I'll see you in the next video.